Hello and welcome to Movie Buffs. Uh, this is a show that covers the best action films of all time. I'm your host, Cisco, aka Misfit Minded. You can find me on Twitter at Rampage underscore Misfit. And my movie page is at Misfit underscore Minded on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'm your other host, Shani B. You can find me on all the socials at Shani B Movies. And today we're talking about the Creed franchise. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, the overarching story is about Apollo Creed's youngest son, Adonis, um, bastard son, you might say, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> we'll talk about it and his journey towards becoming a world champion boxer. Um, so, yeah, are you a fan, B, fan of this movie, Shetty B? What do you love? What do you hate? Ooh, I kind of like the term Fanny B, and I think I might Fanny use B. it if I really do like a movie. So mm, I, I <laughs> can't say that I'm a Fanny B of this whole franchise per se, but I will say okay. I'm definitely All right, spill it. Spill yeah, it. I'm definitely a Fanny B of the first film. And I think parts of the third film were interesting, and I definitely think there were parts of the second film that were interesting. It's just I didn't really like two that much, didn't really like three that much. But number one yeah. cannot be denied as just so good. So this franchise and I, we have a complicated relationship. What about mm. you? It's more of like a situationship. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's a great way to put it. As, uh, what as about the kids you? Call it these days. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I like this franchise. Um, I agree with you that the third one, which we won't spoil at the top of the show, but we'll get into that. But like, For is sure. the weakest of the three. Um, I rewatched too, and I, I do like it. I, I think, um, I hadn't seen it since the theater and I don't remember liking it that much, but I thought, I thought it held up a lot better than I expected it to. Okay. Um, and we can talk more about the specifics about that too, um, soon. But, um, I mean, yeah, definitely the first one is the best. No, uh, no contest for me there. Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan are like a dream team. Anytime they do a movie together, whether it's uh, Black Panther or Fruitvale Station mm. or Creed, uh, they're always great together. Like they just have that like some director actor chemistry. Um, and he he really like from what I remember, I didn't have a lot of time to like get into the weeds of special features and, and everything. But I do remember when the first Creed came out that Coogler was saying that like he had this idea to bring creed back like he had uh this idea for a fr not necessarily a franchise but just like this nugget of what if creed's son you know grew up and wanted to be a boxer mm -hmm. and it's such a smart idea <laughs> cut out there for a second yep, <laughs> it's no so worries. simple it's so simple but it's like so uh it's so genius it's like it's it's just what rocky was like back in the 70s like it was like okay it's an underdog story where this guy meets a girl and then he uh he works his way up the ranks doesn't become champion but proves in the end that he you know that he is somebody yes and creed i felt like what i love about michael b jordan as creed and i think we'll, we'll agree on um is that from the first movie through the third one, you kind of see the transformation from like in the first one in particular, he is just like this uncaged like animal. Like he's like wants to like punch everybody yes. and fight everybody. <laughs> and he's <laughs> yes. like so un unleashed and like un out of control. And it takes Rocky and their relationship to kind of like tame him and like mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And not tame him, but like use it in a constructive way <laughs> through boxing, through sports. Yeah. Uh, and and then the second and third one, I think I love how uh, his relationship with like his girlfriend played by Tessa Thompson, like develops and they have a baby. And like I thought that was some of the more uh, of, like through some of the flaws of two and three. I think those are like the strongest parts And two when she's pregnant and they're kind of like you know, talking about, you know, what if the baby's deaf and that whole storyline, it's really memorable for me and like, and like hard hitting. And so I, I, I did remember that from my first time watching that. And then the third one, um, she's a little bit more grown up. It's like years later. And then, but you're still seeing like the effects of like, is this, is there, you know, a question mark of, is there going to be a third generation Creed boxer potentially? You don't know. 
Uh, so yeah, that's it's just true. my f- first thoughts of Creed franchise. I know it was like all over the place, but <laughs> no, no, that, that that's a great assessment of it because I think that is part of what makes this franchise so complicated for me is it has so much going on and it's only three movies. The source material yeah. is like 12 movies. I mean, you know, not literally, <laughs> but the source material is a rich tapestry of a full world with so much in it. And I really feel like the first film set them up to do something similar. So my qualms with number two are really that it feels like two movies shoved into one where I'm not really allowed to catch the vibe of either of these movies for too long before I have to kind of go back to the paint by numbers of the overarching story, which just kind of feels cheap, especially by the third one. It's like we're not Mm -hmm. we lost the heart because we started finding a more dramatic, grounded story around uh, Adonis. But he was like always straddling. Am I doing the story about how I feel about my father or am I doing a story about myself for reals in my own life? You know? Well, I think having just rewatched two, uh, that was like one of the things I liked about two was that it did become about like his own self journey and like coming to terms with his dad's passing, which like, you know, like uh, I, I wished always that there was more, Sylvester Stallone you know and Rocky Mm -hmm. um but like I do like that they kind of gave him that space to like work things out and like there's that scene and Michael B. Jordan is like uh such a great um non-verbal actor like just like being able to like tell what he's thinking or what he's feeling without him having to say anything so like that scene where he like is underwater and like I I love like the mirroring too because in the first one he does the Muhammad Ali like underwater boxing right and then in the Mm -hmm. second one he goes underwater again but then this time he's like kind of rock bottom uh because he just lost well like technically one like we'll talk about that but uh (laughs) he just does not feel like he's a champion or whatever like he like there's this void inside of him and then he just like screams underwater Mm -hmm. and there's like a couple moments like that where I'm just like I like the emotional depths that they get into um, or even when he like has to babysit his kid and uh, he takes her to the gym while he like can punch the bag and like get his emotions out that way. And so it's like, you know, all these movies from Rocky to Creed, they're all based around the same toxic masculinity and machismo and, <laughs> uh, you know, just basic guy shit about, you know, regret and getting over it and uh not being able to process our trauma and our you know all this stuff um and so i I do like that it's in each of the movies it's kind of handled in different ways and then the third one uh it's you know his trauma literally comes back to haunt him which is like his best friend uh damien uh played by jonathan majors who i thought was like really great like the pretty much the standout of of the third movie where similar to uh michael b jordan were like just from the first scene where he's like leaning on the car and like, you're just like, Ooh, this guy is like up to no good. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, yeah. This, this guy has something up his sleeve. Um, even though like he's not, you know, blowing up at him immediately. It's like, this guy's been in prison for like, I think they said like 15 years or something. 18. I think he said 18. 18. Yeah. So it's like, what does that do to a person who's been like, kind of plotting for god knows how many much of that time and um yeah i think i think where the third one kind of falters compared to the other two is definitely michael b jordan being the director unfortunately like you know rocky uh sylvester stallone directed the first or not directed but he wrote the first rocky and then he directed some of the sequels yeah um and so that that can go wrong. Like Sylvester Stallone is kind of like the exception to the rule, but like, I just think like a technical boxing movie, um, it takes so much to make it look real, to ground it in reality. And I just, I think it was like a little too much to ask of Michael B. Jordan to kind of hold in. I'm sure he's learned, he's picked up a bunch of stuff. Like he did, it was serviceable. It wasn't like horrible, but like, I watched those first two movies when I rewatched them and it's like the one take in the first one where it's just like, you know, going around the fighters and like 
then like going in when they're close up and then pushing back out and like and then going to their corner when it's done mm -hmm. like that is amazing to me like that is all, like every time works and then uh in the second one too like kind of like how they um frame like the viciousness of drago's son being this like taller faster stronger fighter kind of like how they did in rocky four yeah. and i just felt like the, what what was the distinguishing camera work or thing about damien and creed in the third like i guess that he's kind of like a cheater a little bit like he kind of like plays dirty guess... but like just visually they, they, he didn't do enough to like distinguish his fighting scenes as a director compared to the other two i feel like well i, I don't know I if you like... agree I, I guess I agree with you in the artistic sense, but I feel like he did try. It just really looked Marvel, Marvelified to me. Oh, you my know, God. He, I know. he was like freezing. He was slowing the frame rate to be like, I am observing a body while I box. And I'm like, this, that is crazy. That's not been a part of the way he's yeah. boxed this entire time. At the end, there was like fog you know around the them CGI. and i was just like what's happening <laughs> why are we yeah. i guess like i know why we're getting influenced just by like other directors and their ability to bring these things in but to still stay grounded so it just kind of felt like having three different visions across these movies is a unique thing to look back on because i'm curious about each of the intentions there and i think each director still executes like Michael B. Jordan is telling Adonis' story independent of his history with his father. And I think having a new director who sees the career differently in that way is pretty beneficial. I guess, I guess I'm just like old school about it. I want the Rocky through line of like, it's about heroes. Yeah. It's about overcoming one's machismo to realize that like, we're all brothers in this and we all fight for <laughs> our hearts, you know, like, <laughs> Yeah. The sad boy fighter boy is one of my favorite boys, and I it's, feel like we don't really get to come all the way B around on it. You're I'm a, a huge of Fanny B of sad boy fighters. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, yeah, like, I mean, we don't really yeah, get to have that heroic kind of turn for Jonathan Majors because instead we sort of paint him as a dude who's become bad. You know, like ultimately yeah. he didn't do he didn't go overboard when he defends Adonis. You know, when we finally see what happened there, it's not like he was like truly a maniacal kid or something. He just literally wrong place, wrong time, kind of had a record that you can't really avoid. And the system is really what happened to him. And we didn't really actually get to focus on that in a meaningful way because he was instead like pulling, you know, Tanya Harding style tricks to make sure he could get his <laughs> way. And I was just like, no, just be like the best fighter anyone's ever seen in prison. Be like the champion of the prison league so that when you come out, everyone is like, this guy got a raw deal by being stuck in jail. He's here and everybody should be scared. That's mm. what I was hoping for. I, I It made me sad that Jonathan Majors was like a bad guy. Yeah. No, it's it's a good point. And I, I if I did have one uh, nitpick of like the first movie and the third, I guess, is like we never got to see Majors or um, the champ. I can't remember the guy's name and the, the bad guy in the first one, the, the heavyweight champion. Um, me neither shit. Yeah. But they, both of them, there's like this subplot of like them in prison. Like in the first one, he's going to prison. That's and right. Then in the and then in the third one, he just got out of prison. Neither movie shows them in prison or like kind of deals with the consequences of that. And I'm like, like the, prison is like such a, a, it ties into what we're talking about of like masculinity and, yes. uh, you know, like uh processing our trauma and through violence and all this other stuff and it's like yep. oh god i felt like they those are just missed opportunities like to mm -hmm. to show that um so i don't understand why neither of them um really dealt with that i don't know it was weird well, I guess like that's the issue sort of about how it works when the franchise has enough in it to stretch more, but we can't really just count on being able to have five movies to close out this entire thing to really spread out these characters. And so I think number two does a good job of stuffing as much information and movement and growth as possible in. I just feel like movies two and three are in number two and number four is what we actually saw. 
Like we needed the full mm. closure to come at the very end, because I think in a lot of ways, this movie showed us that maybe Adonis wasn't ever really fighting just because he was conflicted about his relationship with his dad. Like maybe he wanted to be the champ always because of this relationship with his brother. And so mm. I'm torn because while that is also still connected to the original franchise, it's the new story that just like fucking Halloween three did should have happened in another order. <laughs> um, do we talk about three yet or do we hold off? I, I mean, let's, about... let's talk about one and two <laughs> a little bit more because okay. I feel like Coogler rewatching number one was the best part of this assignment. Oh yeah. Just Always. his filmmaking is so good. And obviously he was able to bring that kind of, uh, artistry to the marvel universe but it sort of like made me really hungry for more just grounded authentic storytelling from him and so i think that's also why number two was awkward because i was just i was like so excited getting jazzed on those training montages feeling the vibes of the original ip and so i feel like number one just goes down in history i i've it's a rewatchable for me all the time mm -hmm. uh i don't know yeah. what do you think what 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 parts of one do you really like latch on to? Um, I mean, where, <laughs> where do we start? Um, I mean, I, I talked about the one -er, um, which isn't even in like the final fight. Like that's like in one of the like first couple fights that I guess like the first professional fight. That yeah. The Creed initial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is amazing. Um, the, of course the, uh, what do you, ATV, like motorbike uh scene where he's like run, like the recreation of the rocky running up the steps scene that's the with, one. Meek, with meek mill playing in the background like if you don't think that's cinema like come on now like that and the fact that i was trying to pay attention to this because i think i heard someone say it that they hold off on playing the rocky theme until that moment which is like very late in the movie like it's like yes probably like an hour plus into the movie do not play the rocky they play like little hints of it like the piano mm -hmm. like the open the opening couple of like notes but they never like go full on and then when he does when he you know finally is like embracing the community and not just pushing everybody away and then that's when uh the music kicks in it's such a beautiful like moment i love that love that scene <laughs> Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. that, And that's the stuff that gets me like hella in my feels because that is yeah. the rocky through line of the heart of sort of like, this isn't just about you when you're like the champ. You are you have a city on your back. You have a people on your back. You do it for them. And I think that's the weird uh, tightrope that Adonis is kind of walking. Is it like he really does have a personal story and reason for being who he is and it isn't just tied to the the universe that rocky lives in where it can be a little bit more bare knuckle it, it's it's kind of a heightened style story and it's a different kind of relationship to the fighting which i think is interesting and in history i think will be like what makes this franchise super memorable overall i mean it definitely has a lot tied to like nostalgia and rocky like so it would be interesting yeah like you said it would be interesting to see like someone that has only seen the creed movies and if they like work as well because like especially two it's like if you didn't see rocky four and you go into two i feel like there's gonna be some like stuff lost in translation yes. <laughs> like you'd be like wait why is brigitte nielsen in this and like <laughs> so good i love i love that she's there but yeah that's true that, that that is also what has me torn about wanting so much of the ip to be reflected in the reboots but then also knowing that that means there's extra homework for any viewer and i can't be like hey go back in time and watch all of these movies so you can enjoy this to the full extent like that's rocky, not fair rocky in particular like there's what six rocky films and then now three creed that's nine movies <laughs> that's, it's awesome this franchise has nine movies now so it's it's getting up there with like it's some of the other ones that some of the other franchises 
And um, like you said, there it's not like they're not planting enough of a seed to make sure that if they wanted to come back, they could. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess it's been effective enough. You know, it has high ratings. All three films have over a seven point rating on IMDb and they're all on for Google users over 90 percent. They they all have high Rotten Tomato scores, too. So it's like people did like these movies. And so did I. I guess I'm just really starting to feel the fatigue of how IP can get in the way of just taking something as it is, you know? Yeah. No, I feel, I mean, Creed three and I guess scream six, I kind of felt very similar to where it's just like, how many more times can we keep doing this guys? (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. I love you guys. I love, I love Rocky. I love Adonis, but it's just like the whole, like, uh we know what's gonna happen pretty much i feel like before you sit down and and some people don't care about that stuff but it's just like um i I don't want to spoil creed but it's just like there was like a chance i guess to like subvert uh some of the storytelling there and i felt like they really played it safe yeah uh and and stuff we've seen in a hundred boxing movies and a hundred action movies exactly Scream 6, like, kind of similar vibes. Like, I don't mean to drag that into this, too. But just, like, if you've seen the first five Screams, there's nothing in Scream 6 that's really going to surprise you. (laughs) No. (laughs) Maybe a few things, but, like, overall, no. Like, it's very beholden to what came before it. Exactly. Um, Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, I think that's why it's kind of a little too paint by numbers for me in terms of just checking boxes to make sure that we've like done this, this and this to honor the IP and also to like make sure we're telling a full story here. But to your point about Michael B, like I don't need the weird. A lot of the dialogue in this is problematic to me. It like doesn't sound like things people would really say. And I just wish that there was less. Well, there's just like. There's just like talking over moments that, again, could just be tension between actors or scene partners. Um, I'm thinking, I guess, no, I can't I can't bring a certain scene up because it's a spoiler. But uh, a good example of when it works so well is the scene between Tessa Thompson and Jonathan Majors at the launch party for the album is like maybe the best writing of two and three combined, in my opinion. Because a lot of the writing in two is like very flat just because they're mostly just looking at each other and hanging out. And that sells all of it for me. It's like mm-hmm. the the story, the story doesn't really feel like it's something that gets to be on the ground any more than the performances can make it. And I guess I just want more all the time. That's me, though. I just always want more. <laughs> I thought in two, though, the theme, the fatherhood theme was really effective, like. Because you had uh, Apollo dealing with his father, mm-hmm. uh, or, or Adonis, I'm sorry, oh, uh, right, dealing right. with his father, Apollo, uh, which he gets to have a conversation with at the end, which I thought was a really nice ending. Um, and then you have him like dealing with like kind of Rocky, I guess, as a pseudo father figure, um, too, at the same time. You have Rocky dealing with his son mm-hmm. and trying to reach out to him. And then you have uh, Drago and his son. So it was just like the parallels there between those three, four relationships, I thought like tied up like very nicely. And, you know, the fact that Drago throws in the towel with his son, which is like what Rocky didn't do in Rocky four or, you know, when Apollo died, it was just like, oh my God, I forgot. This is like, so they're, they're definitely thinking of like the previous entries. And it's like, again, because I'm such a fanboy, a fanny B of these movies, yes, uh, if you will, <laughs> like all that stuff, like really worked for me. And like then, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, like the moment where um, Drago, you know, basically like hugs his son and is like it's okay after being like so hard on him the whole movie. It's like God, so good. Like Dolph Lundgren, great actor. yeah i guess that's exactly it is that like the performances are more powerful because all that stuff that you said i really appreciated i just also knew was coming or it should be there Mm. if that makes sense like they did everything correct which i appreciate but for number three to be ready to go so far outside i kind of was like 
oh man, it was too tight. You squeezed it all into this one movie. You absolutely squeezed it perfectly for me, for sure. But you still squeezed it. And I want more. I want you to really like pay all the service. Like I need Carl Weathers in a full scene with you. I need you to <laughs> fully Ghost like, dad? you know, yeah. You They're going to bring back Harold Remus full CG as a non-existent human no, being, but Carl no. Weathers can't come through here one time. No. Even, even if he's just I like, it. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Carl Weathers so goddamn much. He's one of my favorite guys, too. but, but you know, like, it just felt kind of like they, they did such a good job of tapping all Killing. that IP in number. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> in number two. And I guess like number three, just like being so far away so quickly was just jarring for me, you know, like just mm -hmm. as a fan, pretty jarring, but, but you're right. You know, all that stuff, it needs to be there. And I think in time, that's what I'll be most grateful for that. They didn't lose or act as though they were making a franchise that was outside of an original IP. I, I mean, I, I do agree with you like uh, on, on that, about the jarringness of it. Um, especially like at the beginning of three, this is not a spoiler. It happens at the beginning, but he fights the, the guy he beat at the end of creed one like and it's and it, they don't they like to skip past that and like That's i had so forgotten fast. i had forgotten that until i rewatched, and i was like whoa like they don't really establish that at all like for people again that people that haven't seen it mm -hmm. um, i just thought of another scene too though like again little dialogue minimal dialogue uh excellent delivery is when in the first movie uh just kills me every time when uh uh, Adonis and his girl have their first fight because he punched out the headliner at her show. Yes, because, you know, you know, nobody calls me baby, baby Creed. <laughs> That's right. And uh, and uh, she basically shuts the door in his face, and he's like trying to plead with her, and then he just like kind of like whisper talk, like says like I need you right now or whatever. It's just like. Oh. Right, I love my sad boy. He's trying. Boys. He's trying his best. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. This is how he shows his vulnerability through his fists. It's it's oh. just he knows no other way. <laughs> it's true. It's still opening the dialogue, and that will never be inval. That will never not be valuable. So I appreciate. I think what Michael B. Jordan did to just like keep this vibe alive, because you know what other movies about boxing are actually ones that get people's eyes you know like boxing movies kind of come and go nowadays or they're like a biopic about a real boxer so we we turn in for that but like this one is is from an original story so in a way it it's telling something that's unique and we don't really get any kind of franchise where i'm like oh southpaw 2 let's go you know what i mean <laughs> i'm so I sorry but though, i i love a boxing movie like i just i feel <laughs> like I was going to ask you about this too. So we, I guess we can have this conversation now, but I think it's the perfect sport. Sports movies in general are great because they open up all these conversations. They're never really about the sports. Of course. Even though the sports are in there. Yep. <laughs> it's about, you know, many other things uh, that we've talked about already. But like, I think boxing in particular, just like I was, I was trying to think about it. It's like the expression, like having someone in your corner, that's boxing. Like yes. you literally have Rocky in your corner um, and I love those scenes in the first one where it's just like in between the rounds where Rocky's like giving them like little tips of advice. And yep. it's just like, that's, that's great. That's exposition through action. Uh, love that. And then just like um, the metaphor of life, like getting knocked down, getting knocked on your ass Being and then resilient. you have to get back up and do it the next day. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's to me, that's why boxing is always like an effective device in any movie so like southpaw i like dude, that movie crushed me when i saw that uh wow. <laughs> um i love the rocky movies obviously um raging bull is a classic like there's a lot oh, of um, that was so of, good there's a lot of uh visual references too in the first creed to raging bull which i don't know if i noticed I probably had it seen Raging Bull back when that movie but came it makes, out. It, it makes but sense like, because it's trying to confront a similar kind of character versus like he's not, he's definitely not just like a copy. He's not Baby Creed. So I, I guess yeah. I kind of understand why he's like, hey. Um, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the, you know, wiping the blood off the, the floor. Like when he's doing those quick cuts, 
mm-hmm. that to me was like, oh, this is definitely like um, Raging Bull, like wiping the blood off the floor, um, stitching up the cuts, mm. um, all those like little very quick. And then like, I think there's like one, two where it's just like very, uh, cl- it's like the camera's close up on him while he's getting like punched out. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's Raging Bull, like Scorsese invented all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Want to have to give credit. Yeah. I mean, Um, that's what I love. I love that when, regardless of like what you're doing, original IP or not, that when there's like a genre that you can explore, that there are people who came before you that gave you a lot to play with. And I think like that is something I really appreciate in the first film. But, you know, because a lot of movies have sort of turned into something a little bit more hyped up and a little bit more fantastical and like Marvel-y in a way, I think it just didn't really work for me. I didn't I didn't love the influences that came into the final film, even though I did like a few. Yeah. Yeah. Like there were a few (laughs) pieces where I was like, oh, that's cool. But most of it, I was like, ah, this really just feels it doesn't feel on the ground the way the other ones did. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I definitely felt that way. Like several moments. Don't want to spoil it. But yeah, I was going to say it felt like Jonathan Majors like took the CGI from him as Kang and then like brought it on set to Creed 3. <laughs> like, yes. It's, it's It was like very off putting at some points because it's just like it, it, it kind of like uh, reaffirmed for me that like what makes a boxing scene slash movie great is like the groundedness in that you're you feel like you're in the ring you feel like you're getting punched out yourself and then if yes you, if you get if you get taken out of that it's like very hard to care about like it just feels like two like you said marvely superheroes punching each other and it's like why should i give a shit about <laughs> this <laughs> yes yes so, exactly yeah. you know we were just talking about how in john wick there's like a relentless amount of violence but there is an emotional core and a through line that is valuable enough to justify this the superhuman strength of this guy and the violence and we were just looking for a version of that in the creed franchise i think in the third one where i i just thought there was it it was so perfect to return to a space of like his childhood because I forgot that the first Creed really started with Mm -hmm. him being a kid just all by himself before Marianne comes and gets him. Yeah, like I totally forgot about that. So seeing that and then trying to connect it all the way through the third film, I just wanted there to be like I wanted to geek out. And in that final fight, I wanted to see every location that he had to fight in before he got to being a boxer. I wanted to see him and Jonathan Majors like going at each other and then facing outside back to back fighting the world together like I wanted the hero's journey all the way through and I just feel like that's that's a lot to ask of a franchise that kind of has to juggle two worlds and I don't know I just felt like I I don't think that's like a huge spoiler necessarily but I just feel like that's that is where I have to that's where I'm like damn this is two franchises in one why why well, I think it's because Rocky uh Rocky has more side characters that you care about compared to Creed. Like yeah. you had you had Mickey and then you had Apollo, um, who like what started off as an opponent but then became like his friend through the movies, mm-hmm. um, and his trainer in, in Rocky Two. Um, you know, Adrian, like and so like I guess they have that romantic relationship. In, in these which is like probably a little bit better and like more grounded which i appreciate yeah where like and she's she gets not to do like, a lot yeah because like adrian it, it, like especially in like the later entries it's just like screaming at him like why are you still doing this and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's true which is like it's like fair but also like it's you can have an adult conversation about these things like they do in the creed movies and it's like i definitely appreciate how she like approaches him where it's just like she says that, like, literally says that, like, why do you feel like you have to fight Drago's yeah. son again? But she's, like, very calm about it. She lets him make his own choices. She's, like, yeah. step in the way or, like, giving him ultimatum or something like that. Like, so I I think that's one thing I'll give Creed, the Creed franchise, that they do very well with, with their relationship. Well, they also just give her a more grounded kind of character overall, you know, like she too is on an overarching journey where the thing like her dream is a part of this franchise in a way that Adrian doesn't like have a dream in the Rocky franchise. So I be Rocky's wife is her dream. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) To have a happy small life. 
but that's what I love about this franchise too, is that like the women in it are tried to, we try to look at them slightly different minus Brigitte Nielsen, of course, but we do look <laughs> at, you know, the, the matriarch of the family now as like someone giving guidance the way that we were first kind of getting from Sly. We move into that with Marianne in the third film and just the way he and Tessa Thompson, they respect each other across the board. They hear one another out when they're making all decisions and choices and they and they like hold the nerve-wracking tension space of like we have to talk about something hard but we love each other so we're gonna do it they're just so Mm -hmm. good their chemistry together is also something I love so much regardless of everything else like they are really listening and talking to each other when they work together and I I'll, I'll miss that for sure yeah yeah, I accept. And then, like we said in two, like when he like stops communicating with her, like that's a whole arc where like, you know, and then she like conf- she like uh, talks to his mom and she's like, you just have to let he's he's rotting like from the inside out. You have to let him deal with it his own way. And then she gives him space and he deals with that that way. So, um, yeah, I, I like like I like you said, I, I, I like the relationship and then the relationship he has with Rocky, too. I feel like that's probably the best of the two franchises coming together Mm. where it's like you know apollo is kind of like looming and you have like you know the son of apollo's trainer is like in some of the movies but it's not connected that much um until you get rocky in the mix yeah and um their relationship is like i i like watching them on screen together i think it's like really well done um it's emotional it's funny um, you know, all the times when he calls him unk, like, yes. like especially in the first one, which I forgot. <laughs> yeah. That he just calls him unk. He doesn't call him Rocky or anything like that. He's like, what's up, unk? So uh, good. Mm-hmm. I think it's hilarious. And like, just like the little jokes um, and and the training too, like, you know, him being the new Mickey. Mm-hmm. Um, when we talk about like, you know, requels or reboots, like that's just like the classic, the uh, the trainee becomes the trainer and the and the reboot or whatever yeah. so they did that in cobra kai where uh daniel's son had to become the leader of miyagi do because you know obviously uh pat marita is not alive and around, around anymore <laughs> but <laughs> uh i think they both both franchises do that very well yeah. um it's not just like shoehorned in there like they take time rocky doesn't want to do it at first um probably because he's afraid you know he doesn't want to be responsible for two deaths. Right. Uh, that's <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, Creed comes in like hot, like hard headed, you know, won't listen to anybody. And then it takes Rocky to like, be like, Hey, I have experience with this. I know what you're going through. Um, and then uh, I forget that he loses that first fight too in the, in the first Creed movie. I always forget that. I guess like um, but... that's what they kind of do across the board is in the first two movies, they really do follow the mold of the movies that they're the modeled first... after. Yes. Like that yep. one, number one is after one and number two is after four, but they follow those molds pretty, pretty well. Yeah. And I think like that's what gets weird about three is that there's not quite a mold for them to follow. They had to make their own there. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I guess they I tried to make, uh, the same... they tried to make Damien Mr. T. I guess you could say <laughs> he was like the big bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, the over the top villain, I guess. I don't know. That's the only no, thing I can for think sure. of. I mean, the look when you said that, I was like, yes, the way the look he's wearing is like is updated Mr. T and also God, I love Mr. T so much. But yeah, I feel like because they had done such a good job of doing the perfect next generation mirror I guess I was hoping we were, we were just going to continue that in some way in three and maybe we did, but I think I am still satisfied with the overarching realization that this wasn't really ever about just his relationship to his dad. It's like, it's like how all problems are when you're a full adult and you're like, I'm just mad because this one thing went wrong in my life. And then you grow up and you're like, oh no, a lot of things didn't go the way I wanted. So it's not just this one thing. It's like, actually when I was a kid, this other thing happened to me and that was underneath all of this. And (laughs) I think number three actually does a great job of, of that kind of grounded storytelling of that, like, we're not defined by one thing that happens in our past. There's like a few in right. there that usually just work together. And so I like that departure, if that makes sense. 
No, for sure. And I, I would say that's where I would give Rocky franchise the edge for sure is memorable villains. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say literally any of the Creed uh, villains are that memorable. Maybe Damien in Creed 3 is the most memorable because he has the most lines, the most story. Most Jonathan villainous. More, yeah, great actor. Um, but I mean, even like talking about Mr. T, like I, I, can, I can never forget like literally the impetus for them fighting is just Mr. T like talking shit to Adrian, like to Adrian, like, come here and I'll show you a real man, woman. Like, it's just like, <laughs> whoa, like and you want Rocky to kick his ass like right there. Uh, yes. But it's like you really don't. It's almost I think that's kind of where the groundedness is a little too much to the ground. And the Creed ones where it's just like, yeah, we can get villains chewing some scenery. Everyone. I mean, even. I don't even think that's unrealistic. I mean, you see, you see guys like Jake Paul and like I these mean, like boxer true. and Conor McGregor, and they're so they're so out of control. They're trolls. It's mm -hmm. like I feel like if they if they do a Creed Four, uh, you know, which they possibly could, I feel like they should follow. If we're gonna follow the mold, Rocky Four has the most like over the top villain in Draco. <laughs> And Ivan Drago as like the Terminator, like this robotic Russian. Why don't we get like a you know one of the Mr. T, a Hulk Hogan, Thunderlips, yes. you know, villain? <laughs> I totally agree. In, yeah, we need to do that. Well, I feel like that's that is definitely part of it too. Is that you had to cho you have to kind of choose which way you're going to go here. Are you going to keep the showmanship of what also Apollo Creed was like really good at fitting into or not? And I feel like this movie chose to not have the salesmanship and the showmanship. But that's what's also kind of weird about two is like that guy who wants to put the Drago fight together. He's sort of saying like, hey, that it's all a weird. show. That and was, I'm like, no, yeah. not in this franchise. Like in this franchise, it's been more about like actual heart, actual moral honor character. And I guess that is also what's missing is that like I do sometimes wish that even he was like a little bit more of a showman so that we weren't just getting like the name yeah. and the fighting Bad skills. Boys. That like, yeah, we might and, and also get a show boy. You know, I was hoping yeah. for a little more of that, but that's also okay. You know, like the distinguishing factors are both the strengths and weaknesses for me just as a fan. Especially because Apollo was a showman. Like, yes. and, and like, exactly. you know, came out in the stars and stripes and the yes. top hat and My James Brown. Shit. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. what so I live it's like, for. <laughs> there was that there was a part in it might have been i think it was creed 2 because that's what i just watched uh where like creed, uh creed like comes out and it's just like a kind of a light show and the and the announcer is like uh adonis creed ever the showman and i was like what is showman about this like i don't see a spinning <laughs> fireworks show like he like you know when he went uh, so goes back and recuts rocky four he uh, ramps up the showmanship that Carl yeah. Weathers put into that movie, and he also softens the villainy of Drago. Like in yeah. retrospect, it was he wishes weird. he it didn't was weird... use yeah that kind yeah. of model. And so I think that's like maybe where I'm torn again is I both want the over the top showmanship, but I also love where they started and what Kugler uh, was able to do, pulling it to the ground in the open of this. So it just yeah. it's just hard to hold one vision for three movies over like what like like almost 10 years six eight years maybe mm -hmm. yeah and i, I kind of have to like show my cards i guess now but like i'm i'm a li real life boxing fan as well nice um, so maybe that's why like i'm so invested and like nitpicky about this stuff too because but like i mean one of my favorite fighters who is i think is retired now tyson fury okay uh um, amazing uh heavyweight boxer like that guy is like if he didn't have like an amazing like comeback story where he like lost like 200 pounds and like came back from like depression and like Damn. suicide. It's like, yeah, like oh. if it, he would he would be a villain almost because he talks so much shit and like uh, <laughs> he's I mean, so sometimes. cocky, but he backs it up like he backs it up. And uh, like there was and he always does like these antics. And uh, like one one fight, for example, he knocked this dude out and then he takes the microphone and sings like a karaoke. He, he sings sings Aerosmith 
to his wife in the crowd and she comes up and i'm like this is so ridiculous this is wwe levels yes so you can you can decree from creed franchise you have permission this happens in the sport of boxing like this stuff does happen <laughs> yes. well that's exactly it is that again there's two worlds there's two worlds being juggled here the world of boxing as it exists as we all know it to exist and the the emotional world of boxing that sly stallone created all those years back that like there's room for both of yeah. those spaces which i just appreciate i think overall because like you said these movies and sports movies, they give us access to these important conversations. It's just that, like, sometimes I also just want to be totally goofy and zany and I want some bullshit at the same time. So, yeah, yeah I guess I can't we can't have it all right. We're not going to always get to have it all. But I feel like there, there's no way that this that this franchise, whether it's via a Rocky space or a Creed space or a Drago space is over by any means. Yeah. And I think too, like we're, we're saying all this, but I think that also they're afraid of doing the Rocky Five, Rocky Six route, where it's like too unrealistic, That's where true. it's like That's street true. fighting and Rocky old as hell, like going and fighting like a prime boxer, like so good, no. like we, we don't need that. We don't need no. that level of like unrealistic fighting, but like just a just a villain, put make the make the villain uh that element and you can keep everything else grounded that's all i want really. i mean i'm optimistic <laughs> that it, it'd be possible for us to get something else like this that we because we liked rocky because we liked creed that i think it'd be possible for there to be some kind of new original boxing icon for us to to love the way we could love these characters i just feel like that's why i'm saturated on the ip overall that I love these three mm -hmm. movies, but like you said, there are nine altogether and you sometimes need to, that means you need to do a lot of homework to enjoy. I'm oh, yeah. excited for some movie that seems like it could be a one-off, but then everyone is like, this guy's the heart and soul. Let's keep going. I think if Coogler came back, I would be a lot more excited because when two yes. got announced and when three got announced, that was the first thing I looked for. And both times I was bummed that yep. he didn't direct it. <laughs> Uh, so I, if he came back, you know, what's crazy. I was listening to a podcast I, and I didn't think about this, that Coogler has not directed a non Marvel movie since Creed. That was the really? last. Yeah. His last two movies have been, uh, Wakanda forever and black Panther. Oh, damn. I mean, so those are, like, those are a lot of work. Like that's like some James Cameron action getting stuck doing avatar for 50 years. So I just want, I just, whatever he wants to do, but like, if he, if he had an interest in doing Creed again, um, I would love to see what he like comes. I mean, even we didn't talk about another scene I love in the first Creed is I think, yeah, he's training. Um, I want to say it's before the big fight and it's like going 360 around him, mm -hmm. like as he's like hitting the pads, uh, like over and over again. I'm like, damn, like, this is like. This seems so complicated to choreograph. <laughs> like, but still, uh, yeah, but it's it's amazing. Like, and you know, you see uh, that, and that puts you in the the realism uh, of the scene or the verisimilitude, as they say in the film class or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but that yeah. like you're in there, you're seeing Michael B. Jordan doing this stuff by himself. It's not cutting away. Um, a guy, I'm sure, the guy behind the pads, I'm sure, is like a real life boxing coach or whatever. Like. Uh, they do have a lot of those things. Like again, I watch boxing. So uh, in the third one, uh, they have one of my favorite fighters, like helps Creed train Terrence Crawford, uh, which I appreciated that. And then like the announcers are always like Max Kellerman is in the first couple, and uh, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. Um, the not like Michael Buffer is like you know let's get ready to rumble. Like That's all know. that stuff helps you know mix into this. Like yeah, like you feel like this could actually be a real life underdog story, which I think helps it too. Yeah. yeah I like that. They include the HBO and Showtime, like boxing uh, TV yep. stuff, you know, like the shows that cover it. Cause I love all that sports, uh, you know, on, uh, on those channels. And I've always liked that stuff, especially in the nineties. So I like that that was mm -hmm. there. Cause I feel like it does try to bring in authenticity. And again, like, uh, it's the double-edged sword of like, if you're too authentic, then we can't play too much. And if we can't play too much, then I my ADHD is going to make me too bored. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but yeah, it, it was, 
it's just interesting that we had to wait so long because was this movie do you have any idea about if this movie was completed before the pandemic or touring or like what yeah like how did it i guess i'm wondering how much i think it was was a covid movie because if you look at some of those crowd scenes like when you're talking about cgi like that was like oh some of those some of those were like kind of rough um so i want to say but like I, i again i didn't get to research it clearly enough but uh and then i also like i got to show my cards again creed 3 uh that they have the mexican fighter um that was dope to me uh Mm -hmm. because mexican mexican fighters are on top of the world right now canelo alvarez who's also in creed 3 makes a cameo so uh, is the champion and um, And also there hadn't been any latino fighters across the entire franchise up until this yeah like what the fuck (laughs) that's insane (laughs) oh so that was dope and like the whole like damien uh like trying to like that that stuff kind of we can talk about creed 3 now i guess a little bit yeah, let's do it but yeah, like we're... him getting the title shot was so unrealistic like that would never happen i mean like, that's why i didn't love never how... had a fight before in his life like are like in, yes in 18 years and he just like automatically is like a heavyweight title contender like yeah they're like the golden gloves boxer (laughs) yeah when they were do that's why i was thinking like their only choice because they didn't go the route of like he is in the prison boxing league he is the champ in prison for years why didn't they do that that would have been so dope that's why they Mm. had to go the villain route of like he needs to basically cheat to be good which i was just like that's a disservice why does he have to cheat? He should literally that just was be so good. Dumb. I hated that. Yeah. I know I hated yeah. that. Exactly. Like such a not something that would have been would have been part of this franchise, I think, before. So it was just a weird choice to me, especially because Jonathan Majors was like gutted, so ripped. Oh my God. Oh, man. I like it reminded me, he... I told you beforehand, right? Tom Hardy and Warrior, was he not like that ripped? Yes. In- Three. <laughs> also like that sort of like gritty grounded like yeah. the like he'll thing. kill you he'll yes. kill you in the ring yeah, yeah don't <laughs> fuck with him do not he's so sweet he's got that charisma he slides up on tessa thompson but at the same time yeah. do, don't sleep on him because he's like waiting for you to look away yeah i, I think we're you know we're kind of hounding on creed 3 i still would recommend you see it like yes. for yourself either in the theater probably like most recommended but like it's also on vod right now but like just for jonathan major's performance alone he yes. is like so electric like in all all of his movies like it's like again like that's the balance of like scariness and like whether he's gonna like do something at any minute like that club scene like you're talking about mm-hmm. i was like some something's gonna happen something's gonna happen yes, <laughs> like, yes. I just, you and could all... just feel it because he's like eyeing the room and like he mm-hmm. sees michael b jordan like you know um you know mingling in the crowd and you just see it on his face like this is my life like this is this should be my life but he's like fake smiling through it all and being like yeah you big shot now it's like oh that passive aggressiveness <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so good. And him, yeah him and sort of tessa thompson's characters being able to align with the idea that like you can have a dream but you sometimes life gets in the way of that dream and you've got to find mm. a way to overcome it. you got to find a way to see your life or yourself and get through that and make changes and i just feel like that kind of groundedness is something that jonathan majors he, he man he's so good he's so good uh and yeah so i i feel like i just wish that he his character was as good as he is and that he didn't he wasn't just like so good at playing a bad character like he'll always be if he ever plays them and i will say what i think three suffered from other than the direction is no sylvester stallone it was so weird it was just like basically how like apollo was like lingering like you know over adonis in those first couple movies it's like yep. they don't even they like offhand remark like they but they don't say like where he is now or anything it's just like you yeah, know they talk they're gonna like, i want this to talk about like how they talk about rocky that's it that's yeah. like the only line they give to him and i'm like that is so crazy like and i know like very uh like I, I don't know this for a fact or whatever but i know there was some like bad blood between like uh, well, I, I had Lester heard that he Stallone didn't like the story. And... Yeah, he didn't like like the story or the direction they were going to go, which I understand because like we're yeah. talking about it, it has a difference. But I agree, like there still has to be room for you to find like a closure there. And 
what kind of sucks is like in number two at the end of the fight, like they hit, they punch hands together and yeah. Rocky does say to him, it's your time now. So he sort of yeah. does do a send off line. But when we're closing an entire franchise out, you the hits all have to come back through. You know, you can't just close. Yeah. You can't just close it without. Well, that and, and, and by consequence, I thought like the best Michael B. Jordan stuff, uh, you know, not like when he's by himself is like with Rocky and then with Tessa Thompson. And then uh, without Rocky being there as like his coach and father figure, Michael B. Jordan had to be that part and i don't necessarily think he's great at that like no he's, just, he, he's a different he's a movie star you know what i mean like he's a different kind of uh actor and so like to try have him play kind of like that like yeah that father figure soulful kind of person it just didn't work and like they tried to make him seem like so old and washed in creed 3 and i was yeah. like what is happening yeah you <laughs> got acting like this guy is like 70 years old like he's in better shape than like most people <laughs> yes yeah being like he's washed it was up so like crazy it's true it's true they they really stretched in a lot of ways in three which i think sometimes yeah. worked well but in other ways was a little mess so Honestly, I'm just looking forward to getting some time in between, you know, this franchise and me so that I can try to look back. And I'm really curious what people who are not necessarily married to the Rocky stuff do with this, because that's, they do do enough saying, of yeah. a job to sort of say there is something in the background. But like plenty of movies, historically, they have backstories that exist in them that you don't that there weren't movies of that you didn't have to see. So I'm yeah. I'm most interested to see if this franchise can kind of stand up in that way going forward. Yeah, and I will say like the stuff between Michael B. Jordan and his daughter in the third one I thought was really cute. Like him dressing up as like a frog and like having a tea party with her was hilarious. So <laughs> like sweet. and like funny that he was he would like be able to do that. You know what I mean? And and uh, it's true. Yeah, I liked and, that the the through line of him being there for his kid in a way that he wasn't able to have. But I guess, like, I didn't mm -hmm. love that he was like, it's cool that you also want to punch everybody. I was I like, know. hey, I was like, that's, can we that's not a, okay. Uh, can, can one Creed do something besides hitting people? <laughs> yeah, we need a Zen Creed to be like, I never fight. I'm a full pacifist. But it was pretty oh, cute God. to sort of see them bonding and, to, and for that to come full circle full circle like you're saying is like fathers and sons is definitely number two and number three is sort of like well who are you really going to be and that means going back to your past and checking all the stuff that makes you who you are that's outside of your family members and then who you want to be for the next generation of your family members. well then full, full circle too with with uh you know creed being in that like uh you know juvie in the first one and like and and fighting everybody and then like at the end his daughter uh you know wanting to fight too it was like mm -hmm. that's another like layer to it but like yeah I, I felt like the dramatic stuff in creed 3 was like mostly forced on like the mom and like his wife and tessa thompson and it just was like like yeah i really didn't i really didn't care i'm sorry i, yeah, I was wasn't enough. Like, it wasn't enough it wasn't it wasn't enough it could not mm -hmm. carry it past the finish line i was just like there's no stakes here like it, it really hinges on stakes. Like, what are yeah. they fighting for? I need yes. to care about this person getting knocked out or knocked down or whatever. And I three, I felt like really didn't establish those stakes very well. Just not enough. Um, yeah. 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 I yeah. think overall, you and I, we, we align and we differ in the best ways that this franchise could ask for from its viewers. So I think overall, it's still great. I, I, I'll definitely always be coming back. And I like that there are franchises to discuss. I like that there's more than one movie here. So mm -hmm. I'm glad we did this. And I'm just glad we were back together again. So yeah, no. let's let's plug in and let's get the hell out of here. All right. Yeah, you can follow the show at Action Movie Buffs. So you never miss a moment of the action. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Rampage underscore Misfit. And my movie page is at Misfit underscore Minded on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Channy B Movies. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. And also subscribe to YouTube because we'll be here live streaming when we speak together. So please yeah. subscribe. Smash that like button. You know what the uh, what's the YouTube uh, 
what's the YouTube channel tag name? It should so just be at Shanny B Movies right now because I don't have a separate. Okay. Yeah, so we're just just right on Shanny B Movies, but I'll put uh, your link in the bio so that you can like both of our. You can subscribe to both of our YouTube channels for all the best Shanny. Well, B yeah, I just want to make sure they know like content. where to go for uh, for YouTube because. You know, if you type in Creed franchise, you know, you're, you're probably not going to find us. There's probably be a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. True. <laughs> yeah, so. we'll be, definitely be posting it on all our social media like we always do. Yeah. So, okay, cool. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Do you want to give us the closeout? Oh, right, yeah. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time for another edition of Movie Buffs. Yes. <laughs>